starting in chapter 3. And when we finished last Friday's lecture, we <clears throat> obtained the equation for two resistances. One of them was a conduction resistance through a plane wall. The other one was a convection resistance. They're both listed here. Uh, in order to use these resistances, we have in chapter 3, the first part of chapter 3, 1D heat flow, constant properties, no generation, steady state. So here's our little picture of the resistance, our conduction between two temperatures, T1 hot temperature, T2 cold temperature, heat flow is Q, the conduction resistance was L over Ka. L is the thickness of the wall, K is the wall thermal conductivity, and A is the cross-sectional area of the wall. The units of that resistance are degrees C per watt. Then we developed a convection resistance. That resistance was 1 over HA, H convection coefficient, A the area of the wall. The units are just like conduction, degree C per watt. Here's the picture. TS, the surface temperature, assume it's hot. T infinity, free stream fluid temperature, assume it's cooler. Heat flow Q, and there's the resistance, R convection. <coughs> Um, just a uh, heads up on this. Some people ask for the e-book from the bookstore, so I put in the bookstore to do that for the class. You don't have to get the e-book as long as you opt out by Friday, this Friday the 7th, but you got to go online to opt out to this, okay, URL. If you want the e-book, fine. It's there. It's $65. It's a, it's a pretty Good bargain for the ebook. We're not going to use it for anything in class. I'm doing my own grading. I'm not doing any kind of ebook grading. I'm grading homework myself. So um, we're just using the textbook. So whether you have a PDF file or if you have, if you have a hard copy, a soft copy, a used copy of the textbook, that's fine. If you don't have a copy, there's one for you right there already uh, in your account. You have to opt out of your account so you don't get charged that 65 bucks by Friday for it. If you need more info, it's up here in front. You can look at this if you're interested. Okay, so now we just finished the two uh, resistances. We're going to work an example using those resistances, and here's our example. <clears throat> we have a composite wall composed of materials A and B. It might be like that concrete wall over there. If I threw a layer of fiberglass insulation on the, on the classroom side here, then I'd have two materials, the concrete wall and the fiberglass insulation, like this. So here's what we're given. On the left-hand side, a material A, a fluid flows over it, with a convection coefficient H1, free stream temperature T infinity 1. On the right side of material B, again there's convection, convection coefficient H2, free stream temperature T infinity 2. We're going to assume that the left hand temperature, free stream temperature is hotter than the right hand free stream temperature, so we know heat's flowing from left to right. There's Q, the heat flow, left to right. Of course we also know Let's just make something up. If 100 watts comes in from convection in material A, 100 watts goes through material A by conduction, 100 watts goes through material B by conduction, 100 watts goes out to this fluid at T infinity 2 by convection. Why? Well, because it says over there, no generation, steady state, what comes in the left goes out the right. The thickness of the walls are LA and LB. We call the area of the wall, they're the same. These areas, my hands, they're the same area, left side, right side. So the areas of the wall are the same. So A sub A equal A sub B equal, just call it in general area A. <clears throat> now the first thing you might be asked to do is to draw a thermal circuit representing the composite wall. That means show the resistors in the circuit, label the resistances, label the nodes, label the heat flows. Okay, so 
there's a resistance for convection, R convection one there. There's a resistance of conduction through material A, that's that one. There's resistance for conduction through material B, that's that one. There's convection on the right side of B, there it is, R convection two. They're in series, as I just said. If 100 watts goes into by convection into A, 100 watts goes through material A by conduction, 100 watts goes through material B by conduction, 100 watts goes to the fluid T infinity 2 by convection. Series connection. Heat flow is Q. All the Qs are the same. To get the actual values of those resistances, R convection 1, it's over there, 1 over H1A, R convection 2, 1 over H2A, R conduction through material A, LA over KA times the area, R conduction B, LB over KB, area A. So typically in a problem, you're given most of these things. You're given L1, L2, the thickness of the walls. You're given or you found previously the convection coefficients H1 and H2. You know the thermal conductivities of the wall. You know the area of the wall. So you know those resistances. You're typically given two temperatures. That concrete wall right there. If the door wasn't there, if the door was also concrete, one big concrete wall. You know, and if we insulate it with something, then T infinity one's a temperature out here in the room. T infinity two is a temperature out in the hall. If this door was concrete here, the area would be this whole area of the wall. The thickness would be whatever, these are thick concrete walls, that thick, insulation, that thick. That's LA and LB. I can find KA if, it's, if I know it's fiberglass. I can find KB concrete, back of the book, appendix. So yeah, I know all those things typically, so I, I solve for those. I put those resistances in there. Of course, the, the object is to uh, find Q, that's the heat transfer. So to find Q, Q equal, okay, take the hot temperature, T infinity one, minus the cold temperature, T infinity two, divided by the sum of the resistances between those two temperatures between my fingertips, divided by the sum of the resistances between my two fingertips, R convection one, plus R conduction A, plus R conduction B, plus R convection 2. Okay, so that's going to give me in watts the heat flow through the composite wall. Now, another question, somebody might say, what's the temperature of the interface between materials A and B, right where my fingertip is? What's that temperature? Okay, first thing you do, identify that temperature node on that diagram. It's between materials A and B. A, B, it's right here. There it is, T, A, B. Now you write an equation from a known temperature to temperature T, A, B. So I might say, I'm gonna write the equation from here to here. I know T infinity one. Or I might say, I'm gonna write it from here to here. I know T infinity two. Either way, it's gonna give the same temperature T, A, B. I'm gonna write it here. Okay, Q equal hot temperature. This is to get TAB. Q equal hot temperature minus cold temperature divided by the sum of the resistances between my two fingertips, R convection one plus R conduction A.
I put that value, I've already found Q. I put that Q value in there. So I know Q, I know this, I know this, I know this, solve for TAB. Now, somebody might also say, well, what's the hottest temperature in material A? I'm worried about it reaching its melting point. Hottest temperature in material A. Okay, T infinity one is hot, T infinity two is cold. Hottest temperature is on the left. In material A, hottest temperature is here, coldest temperature is there. I want the hottest temperature. I want TA. Second step, locate TA on that diagram. It's between convection and conduction. Here, there. Okay, there it is right there. So to get TA, okay, right the Q equation between my two fingertips. T infinity one minus T A divided by the sum of the resistance of between my two fingertips. Okay. Q equal T infinity one minus T A divided by R convection one. I know Q, I solve for it. I know T infinity one, I know R convection one, Solve for TA. Somebody says, uh, I'm interested in the temperature on this side of the wall because I'm afraid somebody in the plant might touch that wall and burn their fingers. So I want to see what that temperature is there. Okay, locate that temperature on your diagram. I call it a TB. It's between convection two and conduction B. Here, there, okay, there's TB. They're called nodal temperatures, nodal temperatures. This is a node, the temperature's TB. This is a heat flow, Q. This is a resistance, R, there. I write out, if I make life hard, I'll write it from here to here, or maybe here to here, or maybe here to here, or maybe here to here. They'll all give me the same answer, your choice. I'm gonna go from here to here. Q equal, oh, I'm not even gonna write it, so I'll just say it in words. Q equal TB minus T infinity two divided by R convection two. Solve for TB. So you, you, point being, you can solve for TA, TB, TA slash B. You can solve for Q. You know what QA is, QA is Q. You know what QB is, QB is Q. So you can solve for those unknowns. Again, what would they be? You'd solve for Q, TA, TB, TA slash B. Right there. Okay, if there's more than two walls, you just keep adding resistances. If, if there's a material C, there'd be an R conduction C put right here. You keep adding materials in there like that. Okay, now. All right, now, all walls in the world don't look like that. Composite wall like that. Maybe they're in parallel. Okay, for example, here's material A, here's material B. In this case, L A equal LB. Okay, the heat 
come in here. Some would go into material A, and some will go through material B. QA, QB. This is the area A sub A. This is the area A sub B. The heat comes out of here and recombines, and of course, steady state, no generation. What comes in the left goes out the right. That's a parallel combination of walls. Okay, this is conduction. I'm not going to throw the convection in right now. This is conduction. So I'll draw the first step you do, like over here. First step, draw the thermal circuit. Okay, comes in. Oh, okay. Um, let's just call this temperature T1 and call this temperature T2. Okay, comes in, temperature T1, Q. It splits, some goes through material A. And some goes through material B. But they're not in series, of course. This is QA, and this is QB. Take that concrete wall. Concrete wall, wood door. Concrete wall, material A. Wood door, material B. Heat goes from in here, warmer, to the hall, cooler. Some of the heat going to the hall goes through the concrete. Some goes through the wood. That's what this represents. I want to find Q, of course, heat transfer. Q equal. Hot temperature, T1, minus cold temperature, T2, divided by R equivalent, R equivalent, R conduction, they're, they're in parallel, R conduction A multiplied R conduction B divided by R conduction A plus R conduction B a parallel combination of resistances. That's how I find, uh, oh, I'm, I'm gonna write down the resistances too. Um, R conduction A is LA, KA, area of A. R conduction B L over K B, area of B. The L's are the same. L A equal L B. You want to put it there, just call it L. Don't call it subscript L. Now, somebody says, yeah, but I want to find Q A. Q A, through material A. Okay, here's how we do it. QA equal Q multiplied by a ratio of the resistances. The current divider theorem, the current divider theorem in DC circuit theory. Here's how you find that. You take the resistance of the branch opposite the one that you are looking at. I'm looking at A, QA. Take the resistance of the opposite branch, that one, that resistance is R conduction B. 
divided by the sum of the resistances of both branches. And then, of course, QB is easy. QB is just Q minus QA. So now I've got all three Qs. QA, QB, and Q. Okay. That's a parallel combination of walls. There can be more than two, but we won't, I don't think we get into more than two in this class, but you could have three walls, but you just keep adding resistances here. <clears throat> and then if you had three resistances here, then the equivalent resistance would be one over R equivalent is one over RA plus one over RB plus one over RC, solve for R equivalent. That's how you do like three walls. <clears throat> okay, so now uh, let's say that we now have convection on this wall. So here's T infinity one. Convection on this wall, T infinity two. We have H on this wall, assume it's the same for both, call it H1. H over here, assume it's the same across the whole wall, H2. So now we have some conduction, some convection. All right, here's the deal. Every time you see convection, add a resistance. Okay, there's convection on the left, right here. Add a resistance. R convection one. This is the heat flow Q. There's convection on the right. By the way, this temperature, T infinity one. On the right, T infinity two, Q. R convection two. The rest, the rest of it's all the same. <clears throat> this is series parallel. So this is a series parallel circuit. Parallel in series with these two guys. Okay. So now we've got to change this. Q is equal to, no, not T1 or T2, now it's T infinity 1. T infinity 2. The dominator is the sum of the equivalent resistance between my two fingertips here and here. Convection plus conduction plus convection. Convection, R convection one, plus this, plus R convection two. Now, that's the way it is. When the heat comes into this node here, it splits. Some goes through material A, some goes through material B. How much goes through A here? How much goes through B? Here, didn't change, stay the same. Step one, find Q, then find QA, but step one, find Q first.
Okay. So I think that pretty much covers everything. Um, yeah. If you're asked to find the temperature on the left-hand side of that wall right there, where is that down here? Right there. Find the temperature right there. Not a problem. T infinity 1 minus the temperature here divided by R convection 1 equal Q. Solve for the temperature here. Or the temperature here. Same thing. This temperature minus this temperature divided by that resistance equal Q. Only unknown. Temperature right there. Solve for that temperature. So you can solve for various Q's and solve for various temperatures, all from this circuit. But the key is to get the circuit drawn right. Some are in series, some without convection are in parallel, and some are in series and parallel. So three options, series alone, parallel alone, or maybe it's series parallel. Yes, sir? Is H ever dependent on the solid? On what? On the solid. Yes and no. It depends on the surface condition. Is it rough, turbulent? Is it smooth, maybe laminar, blah, blah, blah. We assume it's the same, though, just so you know. We're assuming it's the same. But you're right, it does depend on, on the surface uh, uh, characteristics. Yeah. Can you have convection in parallel? Uh, yeah, I hate to mention this, but I will. I, 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 yeah, there's another way to do the same problem. Is, uh, you say, you know what, <clears throat> I'm going to do it this way. Don't, don't copy this down because we're not going to do it this way, but just so you know. Comes in convection through that material. Convection through the, this one. Either way is okay. They say in the book, you read the book, either way is okay. The real answer is between the two. So, you know, if you're really doing this thing, you might do it both ways and see that what kind of difference there is. Uh, because neither way is perfectly correct. But we're going to do it this way uh, with the, just the one resistor here. But yeah, you're right. It, it could be the other way. Uh -huh. <clears throat> and it talks, it talks about assuming either that certain planes are adiabatic, no heat goes from B to A or A to B, or the, pl the, the normal planes are, are isothermal. Okay, so... In this case, adiabatic. The case I just showed you, isothermal. Uh, isothermals here, same temperature both. So um, if you add one more surface, then just add another resistance, like I said again. Was there a question over there? No? Okay. Uh, okay, that takes care of plain walls, composite walls. Now, you know, in, in the real world that we engineers analyze things, everything is not plain walls. One of the most common configurations are cylindrical geometries, pipes and tubes. You know, oh my gosh, all over the place. Pipes and tubes everywhere. So we have to look at pipes and tubes. So we're going to change now. I'll leave that on there for the next class. But I'm going to put here cylindrical geometries. Okay. Just for your info, there's, there's a tube right there. Okay, so since you asked the question. Uh, all right, let's see. So I'm going to erase this too, I think. Any more questions before I erase everything here? Well, we're looking at pipes or tubes, so so for instance, here's R1, here's R2, T1 maybe is the temperature on the inside. T2, the temperature on the outside. 
material has thermal conductivity K. So there's my tuber pipe. And I'm given the temperatures, I'm given K, I'm given the length of the pipe, here's L, this L's over here. And I'm gonna find out how much heat goes from hot temperature T1 to cold temperature T2. <clears throat> and I'm gonna try and model that by resistances, like we did for a plain wall. So there's a couple ways to do it. And you can write an energy balance on a, on a differential element of thickness dr and approach it that way. Or you can go back to chapter two and solve it from the heat diffusion equation in uh, cylindrical coordinates. So I want to do it that way since we haven't looked at that equation yet. So I'm going to go back to chapter two. And I didn't write this up, but I made reference in the notes that besides the rectangular form of the heat diffusion equation, there's also the cylindrical form of the heat diffusion equation. And that is equation two, 26. Okay, I'm gonna write the whole thing out. Okay, it's a bit different from rectangular. This is in cylindrical coordinates. And cylindrical coordinates are radius, length, or they call it Z, pardon me, And maybe angle phi. Let's make it let's make it so it looks a little better. There's some reference. Okay. Three coordinates in cylindrical coordinates. <clears throat> any radius r, any angle phi, any list distance z. Here's the r conduction term. Here's the phi conduction term. Here's the Z conduction term. Again, this is our energy, energy generation Q dot. This is our energy storage term, dT, d time. Okay, there it is. Oh, and that's equation 226. Just so you know, both that and the rectangular form of the equation are in your data package for exams. Both of those equations are in there, rectangular and cylindrical. Okay, now we apply our assumptions in chapter three, the first part of chapter three. What assumptions? Let's start one at a time. 1D only, heat transfers in 1D only. We assume heat only is transferred in the radial direction, from the center out radially. It's not transferred 
in an angular direction phi. It's not transferred along the axial direction z, only transferred in the radial direction r. So anytime you see dt, d phi, nope, 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 it's 1d. Anytime you see partial t with respect to z, nope, nope, only a function of r. All right, that's 1d heat transfer. Now you take the condition, no generation. Okay, any q dots in there are zero. No generation, zero. Now you take steady state. Any partial with respect to time is zero, steady state. Now we're left with a very simple equation. One over r d dr. Oh, by the way, get rid of partials. It's only a function. It's not a function of time. It's not a function of z. It's not a function of phi. It's only a function of r. Ordinary differential. D dr. K r dt dr equal zero. Okay, now we're going to solve that equation. We're not done yet, though. Uh, I didn't use the fourth condition. The fourth condition, constant properties, k, c sub p, rho, are all constant, we assume. Okay, if k is a constant, I can pull k outside the d, d, r term. Pull the k outside. k over r, d, d, r, r, d, t, d, r, equal zero. I say, you know what, I'm going to multiply both sides by r over k. r over k multiplied by k over r d dr r dt dr equal zero times r over k. That's legal. That's legal. Okay. Cancels, 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 cancels. Zero times anything. Zero. Conclusion. DDR. RDTDR. Equals zero. Okay, we're getting there. Next step. Anytime the derivative with respect to r of what's in the parentheses is equal to zero, what's in the parentheses must be a constant. Okay. So r dt dr equal a constant. Call it c1. Divide both sides. Get r over there. dt dr equals c1 over r. Integrate one more time, and recall integrating 1 over r dr is natural log of r. Okay, first major conclusion. The temperature variation with radius in a pipe or a tube is logarithmic. Logarithmic variation. Plain wall. Was linear. Oh, major difference, major difference. Here's a variation in a pipe wall. Inside radius, R1. Outside radius, R2. Temperature. Inside, hot, T1. Temperature, outside, cold, T2. If you plot the logarithmic variation, it looks something like this. 
log variation. If you plot this guy right here, it's a straight line. So a major difference in a pipe and a wall is their temperature profiles, how different they are. Now, we're not done because I don't know C1 and C2. We know what the next step is. The next step is apply the correct boundary conditions to solve for C1 and C2. To get C1 and C2, apply BC number one. They're pretty simple. The temperature at X at R equal R1 equal T1. BC number two. Temperature at R equal R2 equal T2. I'm not going through all the details. But if you do that, you uh, end up with our final temperature variation, T as a function of R, There's the final temperature distribution in a pipe or a tube wall. <clears throat> it's got natural log, of course. Now to get, well, of course, the object now is to get Q. We want Q. <clears throat> okay. Fourier's law, Q equal minus K A D T D R. If you put in dTdr, I'm not going to go through that, put in dTdr here, you end up with 2 pi kL divided by natural log R2 over R1 multiplied by T1 minus T2. So that's the heat flow through a tube or a pipe wall. L is the length of the tube, by the way. Someone said, gosh, you know what? That looks a lot like Ohm's law in electrical circuit theory. That thing in the denominator is like an electrical resistance, but it's a thermal problem, so I'm going to call it the conduction resistance through a cylindrical wall, a pipe or two. That's right. This is one more resistance. So this resistance, our conduction through a pipe or a tube, we'll just say pipe, is equal to natural log R2 over R1 divided by 2 pi KL. R conduction pipe T1 T2 Q. 
So now we have one more resistance to add to our list of resistances. We have conduction through a plane wall, conduction through a pipe wall, and convection through either one of the two. Doesn't matter. No differentiation. The convection doesn't matter. But there's two different resistances for different geometries. Plane walls are cylindrical uh, geometries. Okay, so we'll work one with pipe walls next time we meet. So that's it for today. Homework is due today in the front desk, please.